Good afternoon. I'm Bishop Tony Adenall, Senior Pastor of All Nations Church of God, and I'd like to welcome you to this, this In the Cool of the Day segment. It is an honor for me to be here today, especially with our special guest today, uh, Pastor Maynard Crum, who's an uh, Associate Pastor at All Nations Church of God. And today we're going to be talking about ministry and marriage. This is an exciting thing for us, and, and, we, and so without my continuing to, to talk, I definitely want you to hear from, uh, from Pastor Maynard. So, what, Pastor Maynard, why don't you tell us briefly um, about, talk to us about the ministry of uh, 291 Couples Ministry at, at All Nations Church of God. That's the name of the uh, ministry for the couple. So, why don't you explain to us briefly about that, that ministry? The, the, uh, the ministry was uh, created, uh, as you know, uh, Bishop Adenau, uh, by you and your wife, co-pastor, uh, some years ago. And about eight years ago, uh, uh, me and my wife, uh, uh, Minister Connie Crum, uh, took over the ministry. And uh, we've continued to, to try to enhance it and grow it through God's Word. And, but uh, the key is, is that, you know, our, our true vision of this was to help married couples uh, through God's Word uh, to to see them enrich their lives, to nourish their lives through God's Word, and uh, to see them grow and see in their relationships. And of course, the real vision that uh, we took on was to see a, a teaming, a partnership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was truly a partnership between uh, us, uh, you know, the, the pastors for that ministry, but also the partnership of the church to right. see married couples right. really truly grow and uh, see them uh, through uh, educational tools or through God's Word or through other resources that we could use to show them that how true marriage and relationships could grow instead of what the world sees today is the high percentages of divorces that we see across the world. Now it's interesting because the uh, the name of the ministry is Two Now One. Could you give us some uh, tell the audience about what that truly means? Be to why it was called Two Now One? Well, we use the the scripture, of course, is where uh, Adam and Eve were were in the garden, of course, and uh, God seen that uh, Adam needed a helpmate. He had gone through and he had named all the the animals, and he seen yes. that each one had somebody close to him that was a, a man and a woman, or you know, animals that were together, but no helpmate for Adam. And so one day he decided that he would cause him to go to sleep and take a rib from his side, and and he created woman from that. And from that is that woman is part of man, and that is how marriage is, was created in the garden that God wanted man and woman to come together as one to be a help, she could be a helpmate to Him. And that is two now one, that truly they have become two, now become just one. And marriage, it's many times in, in ceremonies you'll see a candle, two candles are lit, and then at the end of the ceremony there's only one candle. Yes. And that's because they've come together and they're flaming that light. And as they walk out of that, yes. that ceremony, it's only one flame. And that's what their strength is, is that through two of these, they have built a, a strong relationship together. Right, right, right. Well, one of the, something else I wanted to, to mention, um, you and your wife just celebrated your 40th anniversary and, 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 and uh, you took a trip up to New York. and. Uh, and I, I, I admire how much you and your wife, you do things like that to try to continue to spark the romance and the, and the desire of you, the two of you um, to continue to be the two now one. So you took a trip up to New York. How was that? It, it was uh, fabulous. Uh, I, my wife had, had only been to New York once and that was with the church, but it was a very short uh, time. And so one of her desires was to go visit New York, take a Broadway show in, enjoy the city for a weekend. So uh, I, I uh, scheduled the trip. We rode the train up from, from Washington, D.C. to New York uh, on a Friday, and uh, we uh, went to a very nice hotel uh, to stay, and uh, then we took in a Broadway show on Saturday evening, and then uh, came back late on Sunday. It was fabulous. We really enjoyed it, and uh, 40 years of marriage, uh, and I keep telling her that uh, every day is just another honeymoon day for me because it's been so fabulous over those 40 years. And people actually ask us, you know, 
uh, how did how did you do that? How did you how does your marriage last forty years? Right. And it's because we were committed to building a relationship and and going through life together that we had a goal, and that was to build our lives together, to walk right. together in life. Uh, it wasn't to walk separately, right. but it was truly a two now one uh, for us to be commit, committed to each other. Yes, and, yes. Uh, so I think God uh, knew exactly the helpmate that I needed, and He created my wife for me. All right, all right. That's great. That's great. Well, a, a lot of uh, churches do not have married, per se, married ministry. So, um, as a minister of the gospel, why is it so important to have a married couples type of ministry within the church? Well, why is that important? That's an interesting question because I did a survey. I actually went online to look uh, at about uh, 30 major churches, the top growing churches, even the top growing churches across the country. And I came across that only a quarter of those top growing churches identified marriage in any of their capacities within the church. A few did have some ministry, uh, ministries that, uh, that had marriage uh, pastors, but over a quarter of them did not have anything that was identified uh, to marriage. And you would think that uh, you know, how important it is in, Biblic in, in, in the Bible that it talks about how Adam and Eve came together and how much marriage is talked about. That you would think that would that would be important. Besides loving God and being putting God first, marriage or the family came second. But there was so many churches today that do not even uh, uh, you know don't even designate a pastor or a minister or even a ministry towards marriage. So uh, to me, it's it's extremely important because we know that everything really evolves around marriage. Not only uh, you know in what they do in the family, but how it comes right. together to to strengthen the church. It strengthens the community. It right, strengthens right. The, even the government that we we have today. We right. we see such a change uh, over the years of how much uh, the the demographics have changed through uh, you know the 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 marriage and and people not. Marriage marrying today, but you see much more of the single community. But, right. but the strength of the marriage, what God created, is, is truly that if, if the churches today truly want to see changes in their church, then they need to take a focus and keep a focus on strengthening the marriage and, right. and not letting right. and seeing uh, families being torn apart or divorces take place yes. of uh, over 50 to 60 percent of marriages in the church even right. being uh, taking place today. And that, and that again, with, with, with looking at the church itself, we've seen how high the divorce rate is within the, the church, within the Christian homes. But um, what are some of the type of uh, teachings and things that you have done that to strengthen the relationship between a husband and wife? What are some of the things that you could share with us about those that would strengthen the relationship? You know, when we, when we took on this role, when uh, uh, you, and you and the co-pastor mm -hmm. uh, asked us to take on the role, it was that uh, we wanted to, to provide any tool, any resources, uh, anything that we felt that would uh, strengthen that relationship. Um, key words, key places, things that we, we felt like that, that uh, uh, a, a relationship should go to. You know, we have used uh, uh, many resources out there, uh, you know, from uh, some, uh, one of my favorite ones is, per, is the personality of marriage. And oh, the personality yes. is, oh, yes. is uh, we've used that in many of our studies, is, uh, is, is the makeup of an individual. And we all know that uh, we are different, each and every one of us. And when we come into a marriage, it's two separate people coming together as one, but their lives are different. They're, you know, they're, they're, they bring in baggage to, to the marriage. They bring in uh, uh, a different mindset of whether or not they were the oldest in the family or yes, the youngest yes, in the family. Yes. Uh, so uh, we used a lot of the personalities to show uh, the married couples that you're different and difference okay. And marriage is not always going to be a lovey-dovey honeymoon every day. Exactly. There's going to be differences. And those differences exactly. are because you're different. <laughs> and God uniquely made us different. But the important thing is He made us different 
But he, when he brings us together, it's unique because my wife strengthens me yes. from her differences, and I strengthen her from her differences. And that's the things that we try to mm -hmm. teach. Uh, but we, we've used uh, so many resources. We've done seminars. Uh, we went to, uh, Virginia, or to Williamsburg, Virginia Beach. We, we did two seminars there. We've done different studies, uh, you know, from, uh, from anywhere from focus on the family right. materials great, to, great uh, you know, uh, Gary Smalley's uh, DNA uh, relationships right. to I Promise, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to Andy Stanley. We have, we have really reached out to any and all resources to try to give the married couples as much direction, as much guidance, and as much help and support that we can to say, hey, your marriage can truly be a good marriage. Yes. So can. use yes, these and grow with them. Well, there's a saying, uh, marriages are made in heaven, but they're worked out here on earth. <laughs> and it's so important to understand that, that, that there's this so-called myth of marriage and I think even for you and I you know I've been married for 30 years and I don't know of anyone that has a PhD in marriage <laughs> so it's a continual thing that we try to stress especially in the church because sometimes the church uh, you get married by the pastor the priest marries and then that's it but no there's a lot of working that goes on with a marriage. So it, it, it is certainly, uh, this is certainly, I'm, I'm certainly glad for what you're sharing and this has been good because I would say that even some of the resources that you have taught the uh, church, we've even used in our counseling sessions, some of the things we've gleaned from and used with our counseling sessions to help uh, couples because we see that couples, even as a pastor, you have couples that you try to enrich their relationships and sometimes they have some problems and they come of course to my wife and myself and we try to counsel counsel them and some of the great materials that we've had within the Two Now One ministry we've also uh, used. Anyway, um, we're coming up on a, on a break right now and this has been certainly exciting. It's, it's certainly rich. It's kind of, it's kind of different for, for two men here, mm, the husbands, right. and we don't have our wives <laughs> with us. They're doing, you know, I, I know that my wife is, is, is at, at this time, she's uh, actually counseling. Your wife is on her way to Kentucky for mm -hmm. a funeral. but. Um, I, I, we're hoping that we're doing right by right. by them also uh, because of course if they could be here they would be here but so we want you to stay tuned we're coming to a break right now and this has been so wonderful Pastor Maida, you, you, you there's so much information that you've been sharing but don't turn away that dial we want you to continue because there's so much more we want to share with you thank you Don't touch that dial. In the cool of the day, we'll be right back. Welcome back to In the Cool of the Day. I'm Pastor Tony Adenall, and uh, again with me is uh, Pastor Maynard Crum, Associate Pastor, and we're talking about the Two Now One, the couple's ministry, and, and fostering and developing the relationship between husbands and wives. But Pastor Maynard, you know, they're, they're you not only you're dealing with two now one couples ministries, but also we've kind of transitioned to get the singles along because we've had, uh, of course, they found an interest when we have our two now one uh, sessions that they're there listening to hear from those of us who are who have been married for a long time. And, and of course, some of them are looking to maybe one day get married. And why don't you share with us some of the things that that, that you have notice or some of the things that you're doing to kind of uh, bring in the, the singles and what kind of things that you can you have shared with the singles that helps them in possibly finding the right person or, or however you know or even looking at the possibility of getting married what are some of the things that well you know uh, uh, Bishop you we we seen that we were our influx of within the church was becoming uh, a lot of singles uh, right. that was there and we know that in the Washington, D.C. area is one of the highest uh, ranking uh, cities in, in the country among singles because of the professionalism yes. of the, you know, people come in with professional uh, jobs and they look more to the jobs and they stay uh, more or less focused and, and career oriented. But we noticed that we not only had, uh, we had divorcees, we had uh, uh, mothers with children, uh, uh, you know, that were not married. Uh, we also had a large influx of just young uh, right, singles. Right. So we thought that the ideal would be, well, since we're teaching uh, relationships mm -hmm. to married couples, 
we should also prepare those that are not married for relationships that who they need to be looking for in, in a Christian uh, environment and, uh, you know, uh, to be yoked together uh, equally, not unyoked, which we know that that never works out and, and if you're looking right. for a Christian uh, husband or wife. So we, uh, we combined our, our monthly studies, which is, uh, you know, every fourth Sunday, uh, we have a study in, uh, that includes the marrieds and the singles now. Right. And the numbers have grown uh, quite, quite a bit and actually they've uh, grown uh, like double and triple the numbers we normally had. And uh, so what we've done is we've offered them uh, the studies and combined them together to say, hey, who do you really, who are you looking for out there in, in, in marriage? How do I look for somebody as a good mate? And, and trying to give them direction and guidance in what the Scriptures say of what and who they need to look for out there. You know, we know that the dating scene is much different than when we when were we were, uh, yes, were dating. Exactly, so uh, exactly. it's uh, you know you have a lot of this uh, uh, dating online, uh, looking for the maid out there. Uh, uh, but uh, it's it's a different scene, and so we felt like that it was really important to to bring them into the monthly sessions. We've also uh, we've had uh, our uh, you know our Valentine's sweetheart dinners. We've uh, we've had uh, like I said in the past we've had seminars, uh, and re and recently. Uh, my my goal is also to to engage with other denominations outside our denominations right. in the local DC area. Right. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, last weekend there was a uh, there was a conference for singles at another denomination, which we were invited, and uh, we some some of our singles attended. It's to let them get connected with with singles outside our mm -hmm. church. And so the activities we just continue to look for ways to not only have fellowships together, we have studies together, uh, we do a lot of things in our homes, cookouts and, and various other nights out. So um, it's really I'm trying to engage the singles and the marrieds, maybe on two different perspectives, but it's really to try to get them to think about you know, they're, who they're looking for, you know, in regards to I, people want to be married or they're looking to be married. Well, really the question right. is, why do you right. want to be married and who are you looking for when you do right. get married? Right. And I think it's, it, what I have found with the singles being in our two now one sessions or merging the two together has been, uh, it's been really rich because they put, they kind of, they ask questions or they'll be curious about things that some of us as, as married couples, um, we kind of reflect and, and, and sometimes we have to do an inward look and say, wow, that was great. You know, I never thought of it that way. And so it's been great to see that because of course they have their things that they have to deal with as singles because they're, you know, we know how society tends to, um, to, to, to look at singles today and what, what it is, the, the ideal of being single and being single and, and uh, trying to find that mate or trying to find that one, especially in, in the area, as you said, which is high in, in a lot of uh, professionals. I mean, there's a lot of professionals, a lot of uh, career skills, and, and, and sometimes a lot of the singles do get married, married later in life because they pursue career, 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 and then finally they do say, okay, I think it's time I'd, I'd like to have um, someone in my life. But um, you kind of touched on, um, on this, but I wanted to ask you, how, what kind of other activities do you do to foster the fellowship? You know, from, the, from a singles perspective and from a couple's perspective, what are some of the things that you have done to foster the fellowship? Well, we, uh, we, we have uh, obviously had uh, cookouts at our home. Right. You know, the original uh, Two Now One, uh, when we first started eight years ago, uh, just like uh, uh, you and co-pastor, uh, you had them in your home. And it was uh, good to have that home environment uh, on a Sunday evening uh, where it was very relaxed, everybody enjoyed themselves, right. you know. Of course, as time went on, we, the numbers increased. So, and then of course when the singles and we combined those, then the numbers was truly more than any of the homes could handle. Uh, not only the, the in-house things that we've tried to do, the Christmas programs, uh, the, the exchanging of gifts between singles and, and married couples. Right. Uh, we've had Thanksgiving, uh, you know, get-togethers. Uh, uh, the Valentine's get-together was a great event uh, out uh, uh, in Tyson's Corner. 
Uh, everyone just kept saying we need to do more of that. But it's also our fellowships that we have on uh, Sunday afternoons, for, you know, our fourth Sunday of each month. Once we have our study, we then take off and go for a late lunch together. And, uh, you know, the folks really enjoy exactly. the time together uh, yes. to be able to sit around. And, you know, and they're looking at the married couples, right. the singles are. They're looking at the mentors that, you know, how did your marriage, you know, how did your marriage, how is it so successful? How can I find somebody right. like that? Right. And so it, it's, uh, the, the married couples become a mentor to many of the singles to, to see that's the kind of marriage that I'd like to have, that it's God-based and that, you know, the caring for each other and how the husband and wife actually do uh, show that, uh, that the affection and they really cherish each, exactly. each other and, and the singles see that. And so it, it's really been very effective uh, in all of the, 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 act, the outside activities we've tried to do. And we continue to look for more ways to do that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and as time goes on, uh, I think that uh, we'll just continue to see our singles grow uh, into a more confident, uh, enthusiastic uh, individuals and, 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 you know, really be ready for right. marriage. And I think right. that is really something from my standpoint. Right. I want to be ready. I want them ready when it's time for them to select that special mate. Well, we have a few minutes left here, just um, just a few minutes, but I just wanted to um, have you say this. Uh, you know, there may be our audience, the, the, the vast audience out there, there may be a, a couple that's facing difficulty within their relationship. It could be that they're even considering uh, uh, e either separating or maybe even looking at divorce. What are some words of wisdom that you can offer them um, because of what they're facing? What kind of words would you like to offer them? Um, I would like to uh, guide them in the way that, you know, Jesus Christ actually, what He did for us is that He restored us from sin. The same thing in our marriages. I'd like to see the married couples if there's a situation in their life, and keeping in mind, again, that none of us are perfect, we all make mistakes, and you get to look at and see how you can restore that marriage. You can't maybe sometimes do it by yourself. Right. I've ran into many couples uh, in, in my travels of seeking a, a answers to that very question. And, you know, if, you're, if you really want to save your marriage, then you will try and make an effort to do that. If you're really seeking Jesus Christ, you're going to make an effort to right. seek Him out. Right. So I would say that, you know, as God, you know, gave Jesus Christ to, to restore us, I say the same thing in marriage. Then you need to look for the ways to restore your marriage. Look for the communications that you need to, to increase in your, in your marriage. Talk to each other. Make sure that, okay, there was a problem. Then that problem started somewhere. Then it's also got a stopping point. So look at that, and I'm sure that at some point you'll see that this was the reason why you ran into the difficulties you had. Yes. And now you can see, hey, I can change that. I can change this around, and, and your marriage can be restored. And I truly believe that if you try to do that, and I say most cases, you know, there's some cases that maybe it won't work out, but at least I think that you have to give it a shot if you truly love each other. You loved each other at the beginning, so there had to be right. some love there somewhere. Yes. Where did it go? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Well, marriages are made in heaven and they're worked out here on earth. And it is our hope that those of you who are listening there, if you're married, we hope that you continue and our prayer is that you continue to love one another and pray for one another. I find that when a couple that prays together does stay together, and it's so important that you pray together to stay together. And if you're single out there, and maybe you're wondering, well, who is it that, 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 I, that I need in my life? Well, you keep praying and asking God. First, you invest in yourself. God, make me the best person I can be so that I'm ready for that person that's out there that's for me. And God will certainly find that person for you. But we want to thank you for spending time with us today. And we hope and pray that you'll continue to have great days 
and great love as we continue to strive to be everything that we can be as couples and you individually. God bless you all. Thank you for your time with us.